that's where we get to share product knowledge and tips from industry experts that have been at Guarantee sometimes for decades, uh, people from the outside who get to share their point of view about the RV industry as well. Our main purpose is to educate our audience and answer your questions, but we're also uh, here to promote the RV industry and uh, you know, hopefully get folks to, to understand a little bit more about what these wonderful uh, uh, recreational products can uh, do to enhance your lifestyle. Uh, my name is Marshall White. I'm the marketing and donor uh, <laughs> Chevrolet uh, and Guarantee RV Super Center Marketing Director. I'm joined by my friend and colleague Dave Taylor today, our RV Service Manager. How's it going, Dave? Wonderful. About yourself? I'm doing Good okay. I'm doing okay. Excellent. Thank you for putting your glasses on straight. You know, it helps. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> Uh, Dave has been with Guarantee for many, many years. Like I said, he's our RV service manager, and he's going to share some battery maintenance tips, uh, basics with us today that really should not be overlooked to make sure that your uh, next vacation is an enjoyable one with your RV. So we're going to jump into that uh, first, and uh, afterwards we're going to take a look at this Dutch Star behind us, the 4018 uh, from Newmar. Beautiful, beautiful coach. Uh, Mr. Ken Dingman, our RV sales manager, is going to be showing that off for us. So stick around for that segment. We'd love to answer any questions you have. Uh, but before uh, we get to that, again, we're going to be going over battery maintenance and basics. So, uh, Dave, uh, we're playing with sulfuric acid today, huh? Uh, yes, we are. And it's a perfect reason why not to wear your favorite clothes while you're doing this. Oh, yeah. I'm wearing slacks. Maybe I should uh, gear up yeah. for this, huh? Yeah. Advertising guys always get to wear the nice clothes. <laughs> It makes us look important. Yes, it does. <laughs> we know it's, a, it's not true. <laughs> so what do we got? Well, what we're going to have is a Group 24 battery, which 80% of the RVs out there are going to have. Uh, there's going to be different variations depending on the main. So that's why you see it here today. Did you say Group 24? Group 24. And what does that mean again? It's just, it's basically an interstate. It's a battery standard size. Okay. There's group 24s, 27s, 31s, deep cycles. Uh, you've got uh, cranking batteries. Uh, they're all different for whatever use you're going to uh, need it for. For your RV, start your truck, your horse trailer. So this is a typical what we would find in a, a new motor home or trailer, towable tent trailer, fifth wheel. And as you graduate up from 24 to 27 class, does that mean the... the amp crank? hours are more. Okay. Uh, amp hours in an RV is more important than cranking amps. Uh, your amp hours basically is, is going to tell you your, your life you're going to have with that battery while you're dry camping. Um, if you never dry camp, amp hours aren't really that important of an issue. If you like to go fishing, stay gone for a week, uh, the more amp hours, the better. That means the longer you're going to be able to run your lights, your furnace, uh, your refrigerator, uh, the important items you need to stay comfortable in your motorhome sure, or, sure. or tow. And then uh, for the neophyte, uh, you know, this is a deep cycle battery? Is that this right? is a deep cycle battery. And how does that compare to a normal uh, automotive? A normal automotive battery, uh, basically you use it for five seconds while your car's starting. So it only drops just a hair for a short moment, and then it charges up within seconds. A deep cycle battery means that you can run this battery clear down to almost completely empty and back up to full over and over and over again. Uh, automotive starting, crank, cold cranking automotive batteries are not designed to go that low and that high that many times it ruins them. Uh, these have thick, thicker plates. Um, they're just designed for longevity of amp hours. Mm -hmm. Well, very nice. So, uh, so this is the, the business end of it here with the terminals, I suppose. What it else? is. Yeah. Um, all batteries, of course, are going to have a positive and a negative. Uh, if you're running parallel or series, you can run batteries up to 48 volts. Uh, a lot of the larger motorhomes run 24 volt systems. Um, it's all just depends on how you hook it up. But just for the, the majority of the people camping, you're just going to have to worry about two to four terminals, depending on how many batteries you have. Sure. Um, sure. Maintenance, though, is your, uh, the heart of an RV on a battery. If, if you don't have good 12 volt in your RV, you might as well have just brought a tent. Uh, you're going to go up camping for four days, and one day into it, you're going to be sitting there with no 12 volt. 
Most of the appliances in your RV need some type of 12 volt to operate. Even the 110, uh, you know, your air conditioners, the majority of those have 12 volt control boards. Uh, the refrigerator, even though it runs on 12 volt gas or electric or 110, uh, requires 12 volt to hold everything where it's supposed to be so it operates good. So, like I say, with, without 12 volts, you're just towing a blank trailer behind you. Do you see a lot of uh, uh, battery uh, charge related issues coming into the service center? We do. Not so much charging, but maintenance. Oh, okay. Uh, maintenance is probably the biggest issue we see with batteries. Batteries are not inexpensive by any means. And what we see is a lot of people within one year have batteries that uh, are no longer good. And the reason for that is simple maintenance. Ten minutes every two or three months will save you that money down the line. We see some people that come in that have spent a lot of time and energy on maintenance that have had batteries for seven, eight years, and they're still operating just fine. So to save yourself some money, maintenance is the biggest issue. Yeah, let's turn our attention to that. What would, uh, what would uh, be the, num you know, the first uh, few most important things that we could teach our audience about battery maintenance? Well, the biggest thing is safety. Before you do this, because you're working with an acid and uh, the potential of splash uh, or sparks, uh, the first thing you're going to do is take off anything um, metal on you, of course, your wristwatch, your rings, anything that will conduct electricity. You don't want to be grabbing a wrench with a ring on and have that conduct electricity through the two terminals. So the first thing I always do is take off my watch and my ring. You might want to keep an eye on that. Yeah, I, I, I have a feeling. I have a sticky fingers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the other most important thing is your eyes, your face, and your body. You're going to need a face shield. These, you can get these very expensive, or you can buy these little disposable, use them till you don't like them anymore, throw them out down at your local hardware store or automotive store. Then again, since it's acid, it's the best thing is to do to do is to use a glove. Keep your keep the acid off your hands. Um, if you're if if you got a lot of corrosion and you're cleaning these, you're going to get the powder on your hands. That's basically an acid that's just turned to powder. So it's best to keep it off of you. I can speak from experience with that. You know, <laughs> just this week I was messing around with my my battery and my and my lawnmower, and uh, wasn't wearing gloves and. Uh, you know, I realized I got some of that powder on my hands, and so I went in and washed it off. It, it's actually, uh, as I'm sure many of our viewers know, even even after you use soap and water, you really don't want to touch your eyes. It's that powerful. Uh, it is, and it's itchy and it's uncomfortable. So, I told myself, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the time and get me get me some disposable gloves they're, so I don't run. They're that inexpensive risk. for yeah. for the uh, problems they'll save you. Yeah. Another thing with this acid is the, you know, your hands are pretty tough. You won't notice it on your hands, but if you get some on your soft skin, yeah. on your cheek, on your neck, on your arm right here, mm -hmm. within seconds, you will actually feel it start to burn. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's the truth. Even a tiny amount of the powder, even if you think you're being careful, it happens. So, Yeah, uh, so just safety is my biggest thing. Sure, so that's, uh, uh, that's number one. What else you got for battery maintenance? Well, what I get a lot of the time is people that call and they say, hey, I unhooked my batteries to clean them, and I forgot where the wires go. Yeah. Well, depending on the manufacturer, these wires could be one of three or four colors. Oh, so it's hard for me over the phone to say where to put these wires because uh -huh. I can't see it. Gotcha. So my suggestion always is when you take a wire off of a side, take some tape and a pin and mark it. Mm. Yeah. Left Why battery, not? right battery, and was it positive or negative? Sure. Um, that'll save a lot of calls to me. <laughs> and a lot of, uh, we do get people that actually hook them up backwards, and that causes a little bit of uh, heartache and discomfort for everybody involved. What happens when you do that? <laughs> well, it can, it can actually sometimes do nothing, depending. Sure. Sometimes if you hook them up uh, and you put 24 volts through your system, um, it's going to cause thousands of dollars worth of damage to your control boards, wow. anything 12-volt related. If you hook it up backwards, sometimes you can shoot uh, positive through the ground side, and that will mess up your control boards. So it's best to be sure. 
And if you're ever unsure, if, if, if this scares you or you don't want to do this, please don't. Uh, there are uh, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of RV centers, car places uh, in your area that will be happy to do this for you. Of course, they're going to charge you a little bit. But I would rather you be safe and have them do it than uh, injure yourself while doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah, good advice. Um, that, that brings us kind of to the next step. This is a new battery, of course, so we don't have a lot of corrosion on the top. If you see that these have a lot of corrosion on top, green, white scaling, you're going to want to take sandpaper, get these all cleaned off as pretty as you can, wipe them down. Uh, they have battery terminal cleaners. You can actually spray on a rag to continue wiping. Get it as clean as possible. Sometimes you can't get it all, but that little piece you've left basically gives it a, a place to start to uh, basically restart corroding in that area. So get it as close as you can. Um, Do you need to worry about the, the uh, acid, the, the dried acid powder that's coming off the ends of it? Well, you, you do. You need to, that's why I like to use a rag, uh, sure. a wet rag with some uh, battery cleaner on it. Um, if it gets down on the side, it, would it start corroding other components? Well, or? it'll corrode anything metal it comes up against. Okay. So a lot of RVs have where you can actually uh, spray your batteries down, clean your terminals, and then hose them off. Some motorhomes, fifth wheels, don't have that option. Uh, they're located in a bay where... Uh, uh, water hose probably wouldn't be the best thing to have in there. So all you can do is uh, clean it as good as you can. Uh, don't just give it a, a little bit of an attempt and get in there with a paper towel and wipe most of the corrosion off. You really haven't fixed anything. You've just made it look better. Um, the main thing we see is a lot of people will keep their terminals clean. They don't check their fluid level. Oh, okay. Uh, once this, once this acid gets below your lead plates, uh, your battery has depreciated substantially. The main thing to do is keep the terminals clean, get distilled water. If you look down at the top of the battery, you're going to see a lower ring. And if you will always make sure, it's a little hard to see in here, if you'll always make sure that your distilled water is at that lower ring in there, that's perfect. Now, depending on how much you uh, leave your unit plugged in, when you're plugged in, your converter or inverter converter is charging this battery. And while it's charging, you're evaporating liquid out of it. So if you keep it at home stored during the winter, you're going to want to check this every 30 days. If you take your batteries out, just put them in the garage, they don't, they're not sitting there charging a bunch, you'd be fine every three or four months. Just top them off. Because um, it doesn't matter, it matter how clean you have it, once you ruin those cells by letting the water get too low, it's a bad battery. Sure, sure. I'll take a, a moment just to remind our viewers that you're watching uh, G-Live, Guarantee uh, RV Supercenter's live stream. We air every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, in this segment, we're talking about uh, basic battery maintenance, which may seem a little bit, uh, you know, we don't mean it to sound patronizing because it is a, a little elementary, but, but Dave, this is, uh, this is the, one of the top reasons you get service calls to guarantee, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It is probably 25% of our issues that we bring customers in for are somehow 12 volt related, yeah. either wiring or batteries. Ground. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why we felt it felt compelled to share this information with you all is because it's, it's our probably our number one reason for uh, service calls here is is uh, originating with the battery. And so it may seem very basic, but uh, we feel it's very important to maintain the battery properly. Uh, Dave, any additional uh, uh, information you'd like to share with our audience about making sure these are maintained properly? Uh, that's basically it. The, uh, the only other thing I would like to add is wherever you take your batteries to have it serviced, if you decide it's over your head and you want to have somebody else do it, uh, have them check your, your terminal ends. Uh, these terminal ends are actually in very good shape yet. They are used. Those would be able to be cleaned and reused. Um, if, if these are eaten away at all, you're going to want to 
go ahead and have the person doing that replace either the whole cable if it's not corroded up inside or just the terminal ends. Again, the, this one's fine if we get it cleaned, use some battery terminal protectant on it. But once they start getting eaten away and big divots in it, uh, basically all you're doing is prettying up a bad situation. And then of course, like I say, safety. I don't, I don't mean to make it sound like this is the most dangerous thing in the world, but um, you just want to be safe, like with everything you do. Yeah. Great advice, Dave. Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you know, we remind our audience that we're here to answer any questions. Dave's going to stick around a few minutes. If you, uh, if you do end up having a question afterwards, we will, uh, we'll try to address the, the battery maintenance questions you have. In the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to switch some mics around. Excellent. Uh, Dave's going to uh, uh, get his mic turned off and moved, and then we're going to be talking about this beautiful Dutch Star 4018. So give us a moment to switch mics, and we'll be right back with you. Stay tuned. We're, we're coming right back. Thank you very much. Looks like we're back. Thank you, uh, viewers, for sticking through that uh, mic switchover. And uh, I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Ken Dingman. Thank you for joining us, Ken. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Could you uh, say a little bit about your background here at Guarantee and experience in the industry? And then we'll jump into this Dutch Star. Sure, sure. I started with Guarantee in 1997, so going on 20 years now, exclusively in the motorhome end of the business and mostly in high-end diesel pushers. Um, so I know a little bit about them, been following the engineering changes, uh, manufacturing systems throughout the industry for over the, over the years, uh, been to the factories, talked to the reps, sold a lot of motorhomes and have a lot of feedback. So. Yeah, you've uh, helped serve a lot of guaranteed customers over the years, and that's uh, great for our viewers because that means that uh, he's been asked thousands and thousands of questions about these sorts of motorhomes over the years and should be able to help answer your questions as well. So. Uh, as you know, we're here to, to share our knowledge and answer your questions, so feel free to chime in with any that you might have. Ken, could you tell us a little bit about the Dutch Star 4018 at a summary level? You know, uh, sure. why Newmar, uh, why you're impressed with Newmar as a brand and, and what this, uh, this Dutch Star brings to the table that maybe some other motorhomes don't. Sure. Be glad to. Um, number one, the Newmar has been around for about 50 years, privately owned business. Uh, started by an RV engineer actually and all they do is build uh, class A motorhomes. So they don't have any trailer division or anything like that. Everybody builds uh, strictly motorhomes. So the Dutch Star has been their backbone of the industry for the last uh, 20 years for the Newmar line and is really their uh, flagship as far as their volume. I think it was the third biggest number one as far as volume goes uh, on any motorhome in the U.S. So there's a lot of them sold and very, very happy customers with them. Uh, the engineering changes they did on them and innovations they brought to the table are they were the first motorhome ever with a slide out period in 1991. They designed and developed a flat floor slide. When we get inside, I'll show you exactly what that is, but most of you probably know. Um, and then in 2016, they brought five or six new innovations to the industry that uh, over the coming years should become accepted by across the board. Um, another one they brought, I'm sorry, 10 years ago was a comfort drive steering system. It's a TRW design system that really gives you an incredibly easy and maneuverable drive and an amazingly well handling coach in adverse conditions. It always seeking center and something you really have to experience to, have, to really enjoy. So. Yeah, and you um, can get that experience uh, driving, uh, using comfort drive uh, steering, uh, driving a Dutch Star uh, right here at Guarantee RV Supercenters in Junction City, Oregon at any time. And, and we'll give you our phone number afterwards so that uh, if you do want to give, uh, give this bad boy a whirl, that uh, you can give Ken a call. Uh, before we get to, uh, to that uh, closure, though, uh, I, I appreciate the introduction to the Dutch Star, Ken. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what makes this particular motorhome special, the 4018? Well, one, it gives you everything that anybody wants in a motorhome now. If you always go inside two horsepower, wall slide on the other side. Again, we'll see when we get inside. It gives you the interior space of what used to be a 45-foot motorhome um, and a lot more maneuverable, just the way it's set up, a lot better braking, etc. cetera. Uh, so the combination of floor plan, engineering, uh, innovations, uh, beautiful layout as far as design and colors, etc. 
uh, tile floor, the way they design the coach. If you go to the YouTube or to guarantees.com, uh, look at one of my full walk arounds where I've gone through every section of the coach and bays and inside, etc. You get all the real fine details and you can give me a call on my cell phone at any time too. Uh, 831 206 8140 or shoot me an email at ken.dingman at guarantee.com. So uh, we'll get down to specifics that way. Yeah, and I, I so I hear, uh, you know, one of the uh, most impressive features on this is a tag axle at a 40 foot uh, uh, motor coach length. I guess that's pretty uncommon, huh? Yeah, the, and it's a great idea. Newmar, again, being a very conservative company, uh, Mennonite owned Amish workmanship. Uh, religious values uh, they felt that when it went to the in 2011 when the uh, DEF systems came to play which is a which is a mission control system which is really working out extremely well we added about 1300 pounds of weight and in Newmar's estimation that gave this 40-foot coaches too low of a carrying capacity so they, by putting the tandem axle on we gain a net of 7500 pounds so this coach design right now today is has over 8,000 pound carrying capacity. So you could load this full of, <coughs> excuse me, rocks and gold bricks and still be <laughs> uh, within specs as far as how much weight we can carry. And the most important thing for that is gonna be your braking. Make sure you safely can brake. Sure, sure, that's, uh, that's certainly not the only unique innovation that uh, Newmar has brought to right. this, uh, this price point in the industry. And you can uh, see the, on the exterior, you can see the outside door and we'll see it from the inside that's actually in this bath and a half and that's in the second bathroom where that's an emergency exit oh, so instead of having a window this is way up window that's way up high way above most people's ability to get out say you get a chair and have the head out you can just open that door and you know if you need to an emergency situation jump right out nice so. nice as we're you know we're on the exterior of the coach uh, is, is there anything else that's jo jumping out to so you the, the new system for the Tag axle for 16 is that on both this, excuse me, the Spartan and the Freightliner chassis, the tag axle actually steerable, gives up to 16 degrees and will follow the coach around as we increase our turning radius uh, and will prevent any scuffing we have on the tires. So uh, longevity. Uh, nice. The third uh, item I can see on the outside is, we don't have it set up, but there is a patent pending uh, outside hammock that hooks on here and comes there and you can well, your awning and lay underneath it in your hammock. Did you say a hammock? Yeah, yeah outside hammock. No kidding. Just in case you got to take that nap. You can <laughs> sit there and lay into it and you have your outside TV and enjoy the game while you're laying in the hammock. Wow, so. Newmar has thought of everything. Yeah, pretty think. much. They even have uh, one option where they have an outside uh, pressure washer if you want to wash your coach. So it's, oh, you're serious? Uh -huh. Not on this coach, but on other ones. Wow. That's a beautiful awning. That's. Uh... Uh -huh. Yeah, the double, double awnings uh, that are integrated into the roof line give you a Beautiful look going down the road and real nice layout uh, as far as coverage in your patio area. So. How do they, uh, is, is it electric? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. electric. And, uh, is there any kind of, I'm trying to remember with this sort of a system, was there something about it in a high wind situation? Does it? Mm, yeah, they're, they're set usually at about 21 <clears throat> mile per hour. If it feels a wind coming up, they're automatically go back in. No kidding. So if you yeah. leave the coach and go uh, play golf or something like that, wind gust comes up, it'll just close itself up. And won't have to worry about it tearing off the side <laughs> of the motor on. That is incredible. Yeah. Uh, I suppose we should share with, with our viewers uh, the MSRP on this coach. Oh, I believe it's 390-ish. Uh, okay. It's loaded, 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 so. Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna go inside now and point out a few of the other 2016 innovations. Uh, a huge one on the interior is that people are asking for less and less carpet, just le lower maintenance, a couple throw rugs, and I'm happy, and the tile just is absolutely gorgeous. So tile on the slide-out room. Newmar is the only one that's going to be able to do it safely because without having issues. They're going to worry about cracking and other issues uh, because they designed their full wall slide, and that's where all this tile is on, uh, with a double rafter in the center to keep the whole slide out room straight going in and out. If we didn't have the double rafter in the center, uh, we'd have a lot of flex in the center and we'd ask for bowing issues and, and problems. So, And then uh, this is the, this is the flat floor here. There's mm -hmm. no, no lip. Right. So there's a, there's a flat floor I talked about where there's no lip that Numer designed. That's incredible. And then now in 16, they've gone to all tile. To support the extra weight, they've also gone to a star foundation. They put a superstructure underneath it gives you bridge work uh, construction underneath in this area on the on the frame and gives you additional um, support for the extra weight. 
So we go back into the bedroom. Again, you see the flat floor slide with the tile just gives you an incredible feel. It does. This is huge. And light. It is, it, 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 it is not dark at all in here. No, no. We, well, we, we order them real special with the, this and the cherry, coastal cherry, uh, real natural cherry. I like uh, that they, medium tone. It's not, right. not too light and it's not too dark. But it gives you beautiful greens. Yes. Really does. So, yes. You know, they're, they're accent lighting. You know, everything they've done in design, interior designs is overcome a lot of objections we had before. Um, another one they have is, used to, on all the motorhomes, and a bath and a half floor plan, which this is. The second bathroom, because we have the engine, we have to step up, we had a lower ceiling for all the years. What they've done is design a cathedral ceiling, where we raised the uh, second bathroom ceiling by about six in the center, and it tapers off. Uh, so we get the, a lot more headroom in here, so we go back to the seven foot uh, as we do the rest of the coach. And then the egress, egress door you can see from right here. So you just, I haven't opened one of these up. Oh, there it is. So if need be, I'm gonna get out of there. Beats getting out a window. And it's kind of a, just a cool little safety feature. Always thinking about the customer, uh, again, with their background and who they are, uh, the people who own it, all the way down to their technicians. Uh, everybody is very responsible to the customer, and that's how they've designed and grown their business. They're, they don't toot their horns. They just have people talk to other people. That's how they get their business. So, yeah. Great company. Hey, uh, circling back to, to one of the uh, basics on this, Coach, can you remind me of the chassis on it? Uh, Freightliner chassis. Yeah, Freightliner. This is the independent front suspension. This is a 450-horsepower Cummins uh, ISL. Side radiator, MH3000, Allison transmission. It's all the right stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two-stage two Jake brake. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, so uh, should we migrate up front? I'm trying to think what else they've uh, done. Well, the induction ovens is something, uh, you know, coming in new. So you don't have any, this is all electric coach. So there's no propane on board. Again, another safety feature. The induction ovens, uh, you cook with special metal pins but there's no heat works by magnetics so it's nice and safe easy to clean uh, lots of storage is, too huh tons of storage inside and out this this one's set up with a little fireplace here and a tv and a televator so you just push a button and the television tv goes down so much counter space and then uh, another innovation they did, I've forgotten about this, was one of their innovations, inventions, that the dining room table, again, this pulls out. Excuse me, you have two more chairs, it's not unusual. But this design, they set this up, everybody's looking for a workstation. You know, sometime the either green kids do their homework or you just play on the computer. But there's a perfect place to put your uh, keyboard, a laptop, uh, put a monitor up here if you want to. You can run your wires back through there. Down below, under the pullout, perfect place to put a printer. So again, we're using just one little double use of one little quadrant for your office use. And then a file drawer here, as well as other storage. So, uh, so they designed a number of years ago that is a wonderful option for not taking up a whole quadrant of the coach, just for a computer center or workstation. Very nice, very nice. Uh, shall we take a look at the uh, uh, driver's area? Sure, real ergonomically designed. Of course, it has tilt and telescope, steering wheel, uh, smart wheel. What does that mean? It's, oh, oh, I it see has the, the windshield wipers, uh, yeah. cruise control, ready fingertips. Uh, the new thing they've done is gone to Rear camera and side cameras, so you get better visibility. Side cameras as well. Mm -hmm. Leave the key in here, but put on your blinker, and we're shooting down the. This camera three is to the right side. Camera four will be the left side. You see the showroom there and the side of the motorhome at the time, and then center will be your rear camera. So. That's what I would use to make sure my slides were in before I went down the highway. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as you put those on, you, know, you put your blinkers on, you see something obstructing you, you know you, oops. 
Better go put that other slide out in. So. Very nice. And then, of course, the comfort comfort drive, which you've already uh, you chatted can, a little bit about. You could sit here at a dead stop on pavement and turn this steering wheel with one finger. It's just amazing. Oh, you're kidding. Um, that's how easy to drive. It just It's like driving a car uh, with full power steering. So it's really brought driving a motorhome to another level. Also, when you're... It's always seeking center, so if you're backing up to a spot, it's always, a, it's always been a battle all these years. You're always fighting one way, back to another, trying to get yourself centered. You just point yourself where you want to go, let go of the steering wheel, and it's dead center, straight back. So, huh. Wow. It's an amazing feature. This is chassis is uh, of GCWR is 55,000, 57,000 pounds. is a 15,000 pound uh, tow rating. So, receiver on the back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Ken, that is a wonderful presentation. I thank you very much. Sure. Uh, folks, uh, we're going to conclude our program today, and uh, we just really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to tune in and check us out. Uh, you can always view this online afterwards on our YouTube page for Guarantee RV Supercenters. Uh, the recording will be there if you have any further questions. Uh, Ken will will be your expert or who you can give a call. Uh, could you remind them your phone number? Sure, my uh, cell phone's. 831-206-8140, and then uh, email ken.dingman, D-I-N-G-M-A-N, at guarantee.com. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, that's Guarantee with a Y. Uh, this is Marshall White for King Ding Ken Dingman signing off for this week. Uh, tune in next week to check out uh, a toy hauler and uh, some really cool accessories for from our travel center uh, that allow you to uh, measure the propane level in your tanks, uh, remotely uh, using infrared uh, and we also have a surprise accessory we want to we uh, share with you as well so some uh, some great features next week as well thank you again for joining us from all of us at Guarantee RV Supercenters in Junction City Oregon uh, thank you for your business and we'll see you next time goodbye folks <laughs>